Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we have two finals coming your way. We have completed the domestic season. Shall we see if we manage to complete the top four mission? So following on from the victory in the end against Frankfurt in the semi-final of the Europa League, we then return to Premier League action looking to get that fourth place spot and we started incredibly poorly. Uh, Newcastle went in front six minutes in from Jack Clark. Luca Pellegrini equalised in the 30th minute but unfortunately Jack Clark got his second of the game 61 minutes in and gave Newcastle the 2-1 home victory against us which was just like really really terrible. Newcastle are a half decent side in the league, not great, not bad um, but to get beat off them in at home in such a crunch game where we could have went above Chelsea in fourth place was absolutely gutting. So then you'd think you've got a home tie against bottom of the league. The, the players will be fired up after getting beaten the last game. It's, that's not what happened. We ended up drawing a little. <coughs> absolutely terrible performance. Although the match stats look like we completely dominated. We still didn't really create that many clear-cut opportunities. If you go to the match stats here, clear-cut chances, zero. Only three half chances. So we let ourselves down in this game again, dropping further behind Chelsea. And it's sort of looking like an impossible task. And then we went away from home against Bournemouth and got beat 1-0. And this is when it was officially over. Chelsea were four points ahead of us at this point. And we were no longer in contention for the Champions League. Which is hugely, hugely disappointing after such a promising season. As you can see again, no clear cut chances created from us. Only one half chance. Bournemouth probably feel a little aggrieved. Um, that they didn't get to. <laughs> Just one of them games where, again, going forward, we really, really struggled. And then suddenly, when the pressure was off, we faced Spurs, who are still a very good side in the Premier League at home, and we ended up winning 1-0. Marcus Antonio getting the 73rd minute goal to see us through, clearly. We had one clear-cut chance in this game and two half-chances. And as you can see, we probably took the one clear-cut and this is how the Premier League table finishes for this season. We sit in fifth position. So we are going to get Europa League football no matter what happens in these finals. But missing out by two points, really, really disappointing. If we'd beat Huddersfield, who ended up finishing... Oh, they only had 15 points and we ended up drawing against them. Um, we probably would have finished ahead of Chelsea if we just won that game. But them's the punches you've got to take. And unfortunately, Champions League football is not coming for us next season. Unless, unless... We can beat Manchester City in the Europa League final two dear, which I really hope we can because I really want Champions League football. So looking at the team we're going to go with, unfortunately both of our backup wing backs are injured so we're going to have to rely heavily on Dodo and Luca Pellegrini seeing out the entirety of this game. But we're going to start with Jack Butler in goal, Bella Kochap on Jean and Tilo Kerra as our centre-backs, Dodo and Pellegrini as our wing-backs, Mariba and Danny Olmo again in the centre of midfield, Jean-Pierre in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. It's by far the best team we can put out. Our strength and depth is not currently at the level I would want it to be, which is why, even though some of these players are underperforming currently, I can't really make too many changes. The only real strength we've got is in central midfield. Um, and the central midfielders aren't the, haven't been the problem. Danny Olmo is still performing very well. Mariba is sort of interchangeable with Renato Sanchez and Marcus Antonio in terms of performances. But he does have a lot of potential to grow, which is why I've been pushing him in the first team more and more. But anyway, we'll talk about the squad later. Let's look towards today's game, which is against Manchester City. Vinicius Junior up top, Thomas Lamar, Phil Fodden. Uh, Bernardo Silva, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, John Stones, Louise Richards, I have no idea who this guy is, a 17 year old Welshman who's probably going to be one of the best centre backs on the game but currently he's not exactly world class, uh, Angelino left back Edison in goal, strong side from Manchester City, obviously their bench is just half of their players will be in our first, side, uh, first team if we were given the opportunity but let's get to the game. So this is the main one that we want. Obviously winning the FA Cup will be absolutely amazing as well. Getting a, a major domestic trophy under our belt will be absolutely fantastic. But the Europa League, getting Champions League football for next season will be absolutely massive. Manchester City are obviously a massive side as well and they've finished above us in the Premier League. So it will be difficult but early stages, 20 minutes in, going by the match stats, we're performing quite well as we get to our first highlight, Luca Pellegrini. 
with the throwing in an advanced area. Switches the play to Dodo. Please put that in the... Oh, he's hit the post. Esposito manages to keep the ball alive. Holland's there. <laughs> Two. Probably half chances there. Um, maybe should have done a little bit better. Dodo, incredibly unfortunate. Not open the scoring. But yeah, I I'm, I'm really want us to win this game. Look, I mean, early stages were looking fantastic half an hour in. And again, another throw in an advanced area by Pellegrini. And let's see if we can get something from this left-hand side. Danny Olmo, Erling Haaland. He's offside. He's offside. Of course he is. It's just been how these last few games have been going. Quite a lot of disallowed goals for offside. Um, and obviously not creating much apart from that. Oh, please don't let me perform well and not win. Please. And there we are, half-time. Sheffield United nil, Manchester City nil. Boys have reacted well to the team talk. We'll get them straight back out. And let's see if we can put in the same performance that they did in the first half. But let's get a goal or two. Danny Olmo with a free kick. Oh, Edison claims. The highlight's probably not over. And maybe it's a Manchester City attack. And here it is with Angelino bombing down the left-hand side. Jean-Pierre gets back but can't dispossess him. It falls to De Bruyne in the centre of midfield. Got the overlap there. But Bernardo Silva cuts in. Vinicius Junior straight down the throat of Jack Butland who can keep it out. They have definitely come back into this in the second half. Only 20 minutes in. But uh, Manchester City maybe have changed something about their tactic that has caused us to be a little bit poorer. But John pierre could come away with this. He's beat his man Esposito. Oh, he's got to bury this. Please see he's not offside. Oh, he's offside, isn't he? Of course he is. As our second offside goal. How many offside goals are you getting, football manager? I'm on the new uh, update, by the way, the public beta. Um, so uh, things like one-on-ones and stuff should be improved if you had to believe um, the patch notes from the public beta. I can't say I've noticed it too much. Um, but again, I have noticed us missing an extortionate amount of uh, one-on-ones either. So maybe it has worked. Marcus Antonio whips the ball in with a free kick. It's cleared by Man City. And that was the highlight. Only 10 minutes to go. Oh, we've pushed up really high here. And Sergio Aguero... Twice to set them away. Dodo, don't mess this. I mean, oh well, please, please don't lose it like this. We've had two offside goals, and this is the goal we've conceded. Sergio Aguero with an awful, awful pass. Dodo plays a calmly back to Jack Butler and just hit it, mate. Just no, no, no. Phil Foden, then Vinicius Junior. I mean, oh well, what are you meant to do about that? You can't do anything. Jack Butler has done that quite a number of times, which is the reason we're brought in Reykjavik. But Reykjavik hasn't exactly performed outstandingly either and hasn't dispossessed Butland from his um, starting spot. As Manchester City look rampant now, Sergio Aguero goes for goal again and it goes just wide. We are going to tell the boys to go a little bit more direct. Um, 10 minutes to go. Let's just go very attacking here. We will look to make our final sub of the game. Who's performing poorly? Jack Butland, there's a surprise. Erling Haaland can come off. We'll get Willem on. It is a downgrade. Oh, starting 11 ball. Fresh legs. You never know. Maybe it can cause some damage. It's not happening. It is absolutely not happening. And it looks like with 1 minute and 30 seconds to go, we have a highlight. Come on, boys. Nick this ball off De Bruyne. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. They've got a lot of space on this right-hand side. Angelino must have switched for some reason. Why is he over there? I have no idea. But he's playing the ball about nicely with De Bruyne. He plays the ball in. Dodo gets it clear. Esposito brings it down. Please break. Please break. Don't slow the, play, the game down. Willem bombing down that right-hand side. Mendy gets the challenge in. Oh, please. Don't do this to me, FM. Dodo, get the ball in. Willem's on the edge. He takes a strike. Willem, come on, son. That's a equaliser. 93 minutes and 30 seconds. He's 10th goal of the season. Coming on for Erling Haaland. And he's managed to get us back into this game. And that is fully deserved. No way did Manchester City deserve to run out of this 1-0 winners. They might end up winning it after extra time. But with the amount of opportunities we had in the two disallowed goals, we deserve this opportunity in extra time to try and win this. So, <laughs> we got extra time. We've got a lot of tired legs out there with not a lot of quality on the bench. We are going to go back to a positive team mentality now after that goal. Um... They have obviously made all, all four of their substitutions. We've got one more. Um, the boys, the wing-backs are the main concern. And unfortunately for them, we've got nobody on the bench, so they're staying on the pitch. 
And there's a highlight just before half time and extra time. Jean Pierre finds Willem. Challenge Espacito's there. And Espacito's 23rd goal of the season puts us 2 1 up. 105 minutes in. We fully, fully deserve this. Willem has done absolutely excellently since coming on for Erling Haaland. And he has changed this game for us. This was fortunate. A uh, challenge from John Stones. Falls to Espacito. 15 minutes to go, boys. 15 minutes to go. If we can just hold on. Do a turtle? I can't turtle. They've gone positive. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I want to see what they are doing. We will match them positive to positive. They have not been dominant in this game. And they will have to make the change in their tactic if they had to get back into this game. They've gone very attack and we've gone counter. And now we sit and wait for the rest of the game to tick away. And there it is. The Europa League is Sheffield United. I would have been devastated if we lost this game. But thankfully, some heroics from our boys, particularly Willem, who came on later on and changed the game. Got the crucial goal to take at extra time. But we've won it. We've got Champions League football for next season. We deserved that. We deserved it. Well done, boys. Take a clap. Well done. Let's get the FA Cup final. So we're uh, just reading some of the messages um, about qualifying for the Champions League and stuff. So we are in there. Um, we've got a nice, cool £80 million pounds now the transfer budget has been set at. Only 100k available in the wages, but that's something we can fiddle with in the summer. I just thought I'd bring you that nice little, um, nice chunk of change there. So, back to reality. After that absolutely amazing win, we return to our next final, which is the FA Cup final against Liverpool. Now, if we look at Liverpool, they were, of course, crowned champions of the Premier League. Absolutely phenomenal club, some phenomenal players, and it's going to take... A very special performance like the last one to be able to win this trophy as well but our boys should hopefully be on a high and maybe we might see something special the only change for today's game is Renato Sanchez comes in for um, Mariba uh, unfortunately again our wing backs are going to have to stick this one out they're struggling for a little bit of conditioning but 90% 91% I've, I've played worse let's just put it that way uh, otherwise the team remains unchanged Holland could maybe there's maybe an argument there Haaland should come out he's actually he's coming out he's played a 6.54 in the previous five games Willem came on last game and absolutely performed out of his skin he got us into the extra time which was all that we needed so uh, he gets the nod for today's game does make our first team a little bit weaker but he's earned that start he really really has in terms of the Liverpool side here we see it in full floor Lotoro Martinez up front uh, Chiesa Mane or oh, 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 when did they buy him? I mean, I, I haven't seen it in a while. So, 98 million probably in January. 12 games, 4 assists. Nice return. Palacios, he's always... Oh, well, he's signed for someone in real life, hasn't he? So, he'll, he'll no longer be as easily available. Did he sign for Inter? Who was it he signed for? I can't remember. Trent, Fabinho, Gomez, Skriniar, Alisson, Robertson. We've seen Liverpool before. We know what they're about. And we know we're going to be in for a difficult game. It would just be the top off of the season to be able to win an FA Cup. Getting that domestic trophy in our hands would be lovely and would put us well on track to um, start emulating some of Sir Alex Ferguson's uh, uh, credentials in these early years of Manchester United. As we take a look at the first highlight here, Dodo skips past two men, gets in behind Alisson with an uh, unnecessary save. <laughs> that was clearly going about two yards wide, but Daniel Olmo's taken the corner, whipped in Alisson claims. And that'll be the end of that. Another highlight now. Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side for Liverpool. We managed to play it out quite nicely. And Tilo Kerr with a ball of dreams. Finds Esposito who fortuitously gets past Gomez. He's in behind. Alisson with the save. He keeps it. Oh, why did you keep it in? Just let it go out and get a corner, man. Martinez drives. Oh, good, good challenge, Tilo. Please don't get that. That's fine. The is fine. Um, I had visions there of Martinez taking on our entire defence. And getting in behind there. Looks like Renato Sanchez has picked up a little bit of a knock. We'll keep an eye on that, see how he recovers. But he's just nipped in there and won the ball for Willem, who's it? I mean, I, Willem? I started you over Haaland. You can't be doing that. And there we are, half-time Liverpool nil, Sheffield United nil. A pretty even game in terms of match stats. Um, we've protect, Well, we have had the better of the opportunities. But um, not we're, we're not as convincing as we were against Manchester City that is for sure as we get to the first highlight of the second half 
Kerra with a throw in to Willem on this right hand side. Nice play at the door door. Pellegrini's there. He keeps the ball in. Finds Danny Olmo. Danny Olmo with the finish with his left foot. His fifth goal of the season. Doesn't really score Danny Olmo from central midfield. He's more of the assist king. But today he gets the goal and puts us 1 0 up in the FA Cup final. Pellegrini does well to retain possession here. And Danny Olmo's first time strike is beautiful. 40 minutes to go, boys. Let's hold on. Shortly after the goal, though, there's straight away a highlight for Liverpool, but we've nicked the ball back, and Jean-Pierre finds Willem. Hold the ball up a little bit. That right-hand side, so much space he goes for goal. So much so much space on the right if he'd just been a little less selfish going for goal. Another highlight now, Dodo, 58 minutes in, bombing down that right-hand side, completely does. Andy Robertson, he's in behind now. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Alisson with a very good save. Pellegrini keeps it in. Again, why we're keeping that in? Try and get a corner. But um, never mind. As we get to another highly, Danny Olmo's highly pressed there. You can tell Liverpool are sticking with the GG and press here. And they are not giving our players very much time on the ball. But thankfully, our players are quite quick and managed to beat them for Pierce. Pellegrini whip the ball in. Finds Danny Olmo again, who finds Willem. And Willem justifies his starting position. Gets his 11th goal of the season. And puts Sheffield United 2-0 up with only half an hour remaining in this game. Pellegrini does good work down here on the left-hand side. Danny Olmo will think he's going to go for the first time straight again, but he remains composed, gets himself another assist, and Willem buries the chance 2-0. 62 minutes in now, though, is it going to be an instant impact from Liverpool? Alexander-Arnold plays back to Palacios. Ball in's beautiful, but Sadio Mane cannot beat the might of Jack Butland. And sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. With only 20 minutes or so to go, I would love to take off Luca Pellegrini right now. Um... I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring on David Patella. Um, it's not really to protect Pellegrini from injury. I'm just concerned his lack of conditioning will end up costing us somewhere or another. Dodo can stay on though. Ronaldo Sanchez can come off for Mariba in the centre of midfield. Freshen some legs up in there and see how we go for the rest of the game. Only 18 minutes remain now. Still turning up. And Jean-Pierre switches the ball to Dodo just over the head of Robertson. He's had plenty of opportunities, hasn't he, Dodo? But Alisson has been equal to the task each time. And um, this is probably a counter-attack for Liverpool. Mohamed Salah, I mean, Danny Olmo. Listen, tactical foul, absolutely brilliant. That's exactly what you need from your central midfielder. A little bit of intelligence, just take them out. Get this highlight out of the way. 15 minutes to go. Highlight for Liverpool. Awa plays through key as a Jack Butland. What a save that is. Jack, you are redeeming yourself from the last episode, uh, last game. Uh, you know what? Thankfully, we ended up winning that game anyway, so it wasn't too big of a deal. But you've certainly pulled off a couple of brilliant saves here. But Dodo, I don't know what he was trying to do there. Chamberlain can uh, come forward with it now for Liverpool. Plays the ball in. Firmino's dispossessed and Danny Olmo manages to get rid of We've got, got to go to a cautious team mentality. They have just changed to very attacking. We will look to make our final sub of the game. I don't want to bring on Bruno Armione. We'll bring on Erling Haaland. We'll take off Esposito. We'll keep Willem on, who's performed very, very well. Um, obviously getting the first goal of the game or second goal of the game sorry and we'll continue on four minutes to go and we are in possession Jean-Pierre knocking it about nicely Ar Haaland with fresh legs 20th goal of the season Erling Haaland makes it 3-0 there's the FA Cup done I want no arguments about it Liverpool just sit down accept your defeat and we will take our domestic trophy home with us Jean-Pierre with a lovely through ball Liverpool obviously highly pushed because they're on the very attack and team mentality. And Haaland completely exposes their defence. And with a tidy, tidy finish. Three minutes to go. There's highlights straight away. And it looks again like maybe we could build something here. David Patella keeping the ball well. Tilo Kerrer finding Olmo who drives through the middle. Mariba back to Haaland. He hits that anywhere apart from Alisson's face. And that's going in the back of the net. Absolutely beautiful work from us. The counter-attacking mentality now is clearly causing Liverpool problems. We're not seeing any highlights from them. Very attacking. Uh, it doesn't really work that often for me. But uh, maybe I should keep my mouth shut. As Skriniar on the edge here for Liverpool goes for goals. Blocked. Can we pinch the ball and break? Trent, back to Awa. We are, we are keeping a nice solid defensive line, which is nice to see. But Robertson can break that by getting past his man. He whips the ball in. We managed to get a clear. And Mariba is now away as well. He tries to play through Haaland. That was a... Haaland had just checked his run, so it was never going to happen here as Mohamed Salah completely does his man. But thankfully, it's a poor pass. And Erling Haaland 
He's got the fresh legs. He gets past his man, gets to the byline. He goes for goal. Good save by Allison. Only three minutes remaining in this match. This is all just rudimentary. Let's get it done with. Let's take the trophy home. And it's been a successful end of the season. Despite the poor league form and not finishing fourth, these two these two games have been absolutely brilliant. 93 minutes in, one minute to go. This highlight will probably continue for the rest of the time. I'll just see you at the end. And there we have it. Our second cup of the season. The FA Cup has been won 3 nil against the best team in England. Absolutely dominant performance. I think that was fully deserved. Um, we created so many more opportunities than Liverpool did and better opportunities at that as well. Danny Olmore, our key man in the centre of midfield. Willem doing work up front. Erling Haaland coming on and making a difference. It's It all came together at the end. And thankfully, with the Europa League win, we've got the Champions League for next season. We've got a domestic trophy under our belt. And we can really start to develop this squad with a look towards league well league winning might be a bit of a stretch if you look at the league table and how it finished we were some way ways from the likes of manchester city liverpool and arsenal um in our league campaign but um have we pin have we pinched the we pinched the champions league spot of chelsea which is just just beautiful you might have finished fourth mid but we still pinched it off you but anyway let's get through the end of season stuff we'll quickly go over some of the players in particular and some of the um, best signings and stuff like that. So here we are. We are at the end of season messages that we sort of get every time. Um, who has been inducted? Dodo's been inducted as our right wing back. Ender Stevens still our left wing back, but everyone else, Luke Freeman, still our attack midfielder. You would think um, once one of our other central midfielders gets themselves integrated into the squad as a permanent first 11 fixture, Luke Freeman will come off, John Pierre will move up. And the other central midfielder will come in. End of season award. Dodo was our fans player of the season. He also got goal of the season as well. Daniel Olmo finished in second. Tilo Kerra finishing in third. We will pull up this uh, goal and see what it was like. And here we have an Esposito down the left hand side against Chelsea. Pellegrini. It's obviously going to get switched here by Pellegrini to Dodo. First time strike. That is a beautiful. That's one of the best end of season goals I've seen for quite a while. On football manager. Absolutely beautiful. Signing of the season was Ilyax Mareba, 222k for this sort of player. That is unbelievable value. And I believe he's pretty much available for that sort of price on everybody's saves. I've had it at least on two of me offline saves where he's went for maybe 800k. Um, Dodo wins young player of the season as well at 24 years old. Season in review, fifth in the Premier League. It's respectable considering what we've done in the cup competitions. Winner of the FA Cup, winner of the Europa League. We lost, unfortunately, to Everton in the quarterfinal of the League Cup. Our stadium was sort of getting there with 96% full over the course of the season with a 31,506 uh, person capacity coming into the crowd. Once this starts getting to 99 or 100%, that's when I'll start bombarding me board with either building a new stadium or building an extension. Match of the season was our 3-2 victory against Chelsea, which we've just saw the goal that Dodo scored. Um, there, I think we were 2-0 down and ended up coming back and winning 3-2. Our oh, moment we'll to forget was a 3-1 away defeat, a uh, home defeat against Manchester City, which I don't think is that bad, honestly. In terms of going forward with the club, our club vision and expectations meeting, they've now added, um, what have they added? Do not sign players over the age of 30. I think, I think that was already there. I can't even remember. Sign high, high reputation players. I want that gone. I am not signing high reputation players. I'll, I'll commit to this one. Do not sign players over the age of 30. Um, minimum four-year contracts for first-team players. Okay, okay, you can. I'll, I'll accept that. Challenge for silverware next season. <laughs> what? What? What silverware? What silverware are you talking about here? You're not talking about the Premier League, are you? Win the Premier League challenge for Premier League. Qualify for Champions Cup. Win silver. Challenge for silverware. Is that? Is that worse or better? I don't know. I'm going to say qualify for Champions Cup. I think that's by the end of 27. I'm confused. I'm very, 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 very confused. But um, we we will suggest this and see if they accept it. I'm not signing high reputation players. You can't ask me not to sign. There we are. They've backed down. We've managed to get rid of that. Thank God for that. 
signing high reputation players and not signing players over the age of 30 is going to cost a fortune. If you're signing a high reputation player who's under the age of 30, you're going to be spending an absolute bomb, which I do not want to do. Um, I want to qualify for the Champions League next next time. I was just hoping we'd be a bit more ambitious. Uh, I disagree. We'll, we'll carry on with that. I, I think our boys, some of them are getting a bit carried away. I think we're going to challenge for the Premier League. Maybe with some of the signs in the summer we might, but I want to keep expectations as low as humanly possible. So looking at the squad over the course of this season, Danny Olmo has been a standout performer. Playing in not his natural position, playing in central midfield, he somehow still managed to play 55 games, not getting injured, 5 goals with 21 assists playing as the Metzala as it's part of that too. I really like him in that role, he really suits it well and clearly he's performing incredibly well. Dodo next in there, 47 games from right wing back, 7 goals and 12 assists. Now I'll not lie, Dodo was a little bit of a suspect buy from me. He's usually not the sort of player I would sign at the age of 23 with £20.5 million. I th it was 22 when we bought him, wasn't it? But um, yeah, it was it was a little bit of a suspect signing, but he's definitely paid dividends, especially this season. In terms of our top goal scorer, it did end up being Sebastiano Esposito. Only 23 goals in 56 games isn't actually that crazy, but you look at his attributes, he has developed absolutely wonderfully. Still got potentially one more start to go, and at only 20 years old, and valued at £73 million, we are bound to get some interest over the summer for him. Next up is Erling Haaland, 44 games with two substitute appearances, getting 20 goals. He is the better of the two strikers, based on raw attributes. He did not perform half as well, only a 7.02 average rating in the Premier League, 11 goals in 30 games. He was a bit disappointing. I did, at the back end of the season, change our tactic to a pressing forward and an advanced forward. The pressing forward hopefully will bring out a little bit more of what we what we can see in Erling Haaland. And I know that because I've managed him on other saves. Jean-Pierre, another decent se season from him. He's got 10 goals in 36 games in the Premier League. He's been Mr. Consistent ever since he signed, really. Um, his first season was the best, but this has been his second best season in terms of average rating. And I'm still pretty happy with him. He's not necessarily an end game player, I would say. Like, not that he's bad by any means, but I'm sure I'll be able to find someone with that, if not currently better, with that little bit more potential. Because he's never going to be world class, Jean Pierre despite the fact he might have half star or so to grow. But at 25 years old, it's highly unlikely we're going to see any major improvements in terms of his attributes. Luca Pellegrini, another 13 goals from right left wing back, nothing to sneeze at. Willem, Willem, signed him for what? 875k, 975k? And yes, he did not get as much game time as he probably should. And yes, he only scored three goals and three assists in his Premier League um, games that he did play. But... We just saw in that uh, this episode that he made the difference in the Europa League final. He played very, very well. His attributes are rising nicely. This guy was a little bit of a punt, to be honest with you. I've never seen him develop well on FM, to be honest. Uh, well, um, maybe with under the right guidance and if we give him some more game time, he might for us. I'm not that hopeful. He is wanted currently. Uh, 10.75 million is worth. FC Nantes are currently interested. He's done heroics, and it will be I will be sad to lose him. But if he ends up leaving, he ends up leaving. In terms of the rest of the squad, goalkeeper will forever be a mystery to me. Jack Butland performed decently, 6.82 in the Europa League, 7.01 in the Premier League. It's absolutely fantastic, to be honest with you. Um, our 30 years old English, should we keep him? Should I look to upgrade him? Is there even an upgrade? That's what, at a reasonable price. There probably is. Reykjavik is requested a transfer, so he's transfer listed by request. He will probably leave the club over the summer, which I'm not too fussed about. He came in, didn't really uh, perform all that well. He did get some game time for Premier League starts, two in the Europa League, but he never really um, excelled. David Batella was our most expensive signing over the summer, and look how he's, de he's developed very nicely. He hasn't played as much football as I would have liked personally. Um, that third centre-back role has been between him and Tilo Kera, and Tilo Kera often got the nod, so maybe next season we might see a little bit more of Patella, but them physicals have definitely caught my eye, and he's looking very, very good. Bella Kotchap, he's just an absolute stud. He's 21 years old, still got room to grow, and he's been absolutely fantastic for us in every competition. 
Bruno Armione, he'll probably end up being sold or just kept around the squad as a backup player. Uh, we've already spoke about Dodo, George Baldock and Ender Stevens. I'll talk about them both. They were both players that started at Sheffield United when we took over. They're both players that have performed extremely well for us over the seasons, particularly Ender Stevens, um, I think, has performed. But they're getting on and I really need to start improving the strength and depth of this squad. That that was one of the major issues with our season was beyond our first level, we're pretty poor. And them are two areas where I'm going to have to look to improve on going. He's Jerome Onjean. We'll quickly show him. Fantastic centre-back. Sign him on your FM saves. He's always great. Tilo Kerra. Probably the weakest in terms of attributes, I would say. He's defensively, at least in his technical attributes, probably the best. But combine that with his mental and physicals, he's probably, like him Him and Batella are close, right? They're very, very close. He is currently wanted and valued at 32 million. He's, well, 66 million, I think, was his previous minimum fee. So if Real Madrid come in over the summer, I might be tempted, particularly for a good sum of money. Luca Pellegrini, 13 goals from left wing back. He's been absolutely fantastic. If we can sign someone who can compete with him for the first team spot, that wouldn't go amiss. Marcus Antonio, 12 assists from central midfield. Done very, very well for us. Um, probably could have given him more game time for his output. He's a very he's a very technical player. He's not really a box-to-box -box as much as like the likes of Renato Sanchez is. Um, and with Mariba coming in with the potential that he's got... Oh, Maybe he goes. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see who gets interest. Oliver Norwood and John Fleck were non-existent in this squad. And their their contracts, I think, they're both running out this season. So they will probably both be released. Mariba, 200k. Fantastic. He's going to be part of the first team. First 11 next season. Ben Osborne. Do you, do you even know Ben Osborne? I didn't even know Ben Osborne. We signed him. Well, I didn't sign him. Somebody did for three and a half million pound. And he's never really featured that much for me. And is he getting released this season? He is. So he will be leaving the club. Renato Sanchez, a very, very steady player for us. He just loves playing in central midfield. He's got four roles where he's brilliant at. Physically, he's fantastic. Um, he's got the work rate as well. Shame about the teamwork, but work rate's great. His aggression's good as well. He offers us a little bit something different compared to the other three, I would say. Um, particularly in the, the, the aggression department. I really like that. We've already spoke about Jean-Pierre, Danny Olmo. And Katia, he made three substitute appearances. That's what that's what lone players end up getting. And we've spoke about the rest. So, looking forward to next season. Where would you say we need to improve? I would really love a world-class goalkeeper. Or at least someone who's going to be. Um, and then I can put the development time and drop Jack Butland. <laughs> Honestly, there's been one too many occasions where he's just annoyed me. Um, apart from that... I think we're really looking to strengthen the squad in terms of depth rather than first 11 players. That's not to say I'm not going to be looking in every single position for better players than we currently have because then the better players can come in and the other players can just drop down into the squad. But um, I think with the funds that we've got, 80 million and the potential for some sales, we could see a very, very productive transfer window. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.